up, YouTube? This is Kenobi with the Wise Guys, and I am going to do another Yu-Gi-Oh! 101 video. We had a lot of really positive feedback on the first one where we talked about uh, just kind of what to expect at a regional and how to kind of go about trying to be successful at one. I wanted to go on to another subject that was something that was really important to me when I first got started. Um, this was basically how to apply math to Yu-Gi-Oh! And the way that you do that is using a tool called a hypergeometric calculator. I want to give a special shout out to guys like Greg Farley and Alan Nails, who were both big on teaching me how to make my decks better by applying uh, math to Yu-Gi-Oh! And using that knowledge and these tools to help me become a better theorist. So basically, if you ever want to run some theoretical calculations, you just Google hypergeometric calculator. It'll bring up this page, stattrek.com, where you can do it, you know, on your mobile phone or on a computer. And this is a really useful tool. So generally speaking, every Yu-Gi-Oh deck has 40 cards in it. That's the prevailing number for most deck theorists. The preferred number of any given card is three in a deck. And the starting sample size is your turn zero hand, so five cards. If you're running a going second deck, this number can be six, but we're going to focus on this right now. And so you want to know the chances of opening one copy of that card that you have three of in your hand. So you plug all these numbers in, you hit calculate, and the number you're most interested in is the cumulative probability where x is greater than or equal to one. This will tell you how often you will have at least one copy of this card in your hand. And the answer is 33.75%. So on average, a little bit better than one third of the time, you will open one copy of that three of in your opening hand in a 40 card deck. Now, the reason people talk about Upstart Goblin in 40 card decks is because Upstart just basically says draw the next card. So it essentially makes your deck 39 cards. So same amount of population, same sample size, and you're still trying to find out what you get for one, all of a sudden you're looking at 34.5% of the time. So you went from like 33.75 to 34 and a half. So essentially 0.75. You tried to increase your percentage by about 1% of the time. So, you know, 39 cards, yeah, you're going to have a 1%-ish increase in consistency. But there's another number that we need to pay attention to, and that's where X is greater than 1. This is where you run into the question of, am I going to brick on a card? So in a 39-card deck, if you run 3 of a card, the chances of you opening with 2 of that are 3.8% of the time. So if you shuffle right, you know, and you're just kind of running the average numbers over the course of the day, the breakdown should be 3.8% of the time. Now, if you run a 40 card deck, of course, you lower that consistency and you trade it off for about 0.2, so 3.6%. Again, 3.6% chance to brick, 3.8% chance to brick. So not a big difference. So as you can see, 40 cards gives you pretty good consistency and you're still running less than a 5% chance of breaking on something, which is a good thing. Now let's say you kind of want to lower the chance of running a break. Maybe you're running a card that's a hard once per turn and you don't want to see two copies of it in your hand. Obviously, prevailing deck theory is to run two copies of that card. That way, you cut the percentage of seeing it down to 1.3. So you trade it off 2%. But let's take a look at the chances of seeing it at all. Maybe you really need to open that card, even though it's a hard once per turn. All of a sudden, you're looking at 24% of the time. So you lost almost 10% of your consistency for the sake of dropping the bricking chance by only 2%. So it has to make you wonder, what's a better way to do it? Well, let's leave it at 3, and let's up the card count a little bit. Let's just take it to 42. Nothing crazy. Just two more cards, what's the trade-off? Normally, 33.75% of the time, you open it. Right here, 32.37, or 31. So, you know, you traded off 1% of the chance, and then you lowered the bricking percent chance by about 0.3. So again, 
not significant. So the question is, you know, how far can we take this? Maybe you take it up to 44 cards. Now you're looking at a 3% chance. And the chance of seeing it, 31. So you've traded 2% for a half a percent. As you can see, these little tweaks are not seeming to make that big of a difference. So, you know, prevailing deck theory, maybe you might want to rethink kind of what you're worried about, what your focus is. What, where is the percentage most important? Is it in that little half a percent that you're trading off, or is it in the two or three percent that you're trading off based off of the ratios that you're running? So, you know, just think about stuff like that. Whenever you're in a conversation on a Yu-Gi-Oh group and they talk about, oh, you know, chances of breaking are too high, or maybe they want to say something along the lines of, you know, that doesn't work, you'll never see that card, or that's bad theory. Usually when people tell you that, it's because they already know how all this math already breaks down. So keep that in mind when you're having these conversations, especially as a new player. When you're still building a deck and you don't really understand how ratios work, and trying to fine-tune each one, because you want to make sure that when you're drawing these cards, you have what you need in your starting hand. But at the same time, you also kind of want to make sure that those cards that you're seeing are going to wind up being at the, you know, in your hand at some point. So let's say a few turns have gone by. All of a sudden, you don't really have 40 cards in your deck anymore. You're looking at something closer to about, you know, maybe 30, right? At this point, maybe you've seen zero copies of that card, right? So top decking, there's only going to be one sample size. This is drawing one card at a time, and you're trying to dig for that card you haven't seen yet. As you can see, as you go, the cumulative property continues to go down. So the population size and the number of successes are making a big difference. The, as you go down, that percentage is going to go to a different level. And just messing around with these numbers kind of starts giving you an idea of what you're working with on any given time, whether you're trying to top deck, whether you're trying to draw two. Knowing these numbers makes a big difference. If you're trying to dig for something that you only have two of and you're doing pot of desires and you've got 25 cards left in your hand, you've got like a 15, 16% chance of seeing that card that you actually need. So using this tool is really helpful for applying the math, knowing what your chances are of seeing any given card when you start. Even if you're right there at your starting hand, right? You didn't get it in your starting hand, so you're trying to draw two. You have an 11% chance of finding that one card you're looking for. Little things like this are a big difference between being just a regular scrub level player, not to use that word as a mean thing, but for just a regular entry level player who doesn't think competitively, this is going to be that first step towards a real competitive player. When you start applying math to the game and start understanding how things work and why they work, it's going to help make you a better player. And that's really what this tutorial is all about. Trying to give you tips to use the tools that you can in order to get what you need. Just keep this stuff in mind, run the numbers, and, you know, at any given time while you're play testing, maybe bust out the geometric calculator, make sure you have the number of cards that you need, and just, you know, try to see what your chances of doing what you need to do in a play are going to work out for you. Hopefully, this video is going to get a lot of positive feedback like the last one. I'd like to continue doing Yu-Gi-Oh! 101 videos and hopefully continue passing on a lot of this knowledge that's been given to me by my fellow members of Team Wise Guys. Make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, and if you want to get updates on all the latest Team Wise Guys content, hit that notification bell. And also make sure to check out our sponsor, Ink Gaming. You'll see a link in the chat below in the description. So make sure you check them out, use our coupon code, and help support the team. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you in the next one. All right.